You are watching Sammy, the Interviewing Toucan, made possible by the Indiana Young Readers Center. Hey, everybody. I'm Sammy, and I'm here today with Indiana author Paige McBriar. Hi, Paige. How are you? Hi. Nice to be here. Gosh, it's so nice to see you. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and about your connection to Indiana? Well, I was born and raised in Indiana. I was born in Indianapolis and I grew up there. Um, and I went to elementary school uh, at a school called Orchard School. Uh, and it was a really wonderful place to grow up. Um, it was a great school. Um, it was near Holiday Park. Um, and then when I was in high school, we moved to St. Louis. Uh, and when I graduated from college, which was in Illinois, I moved to New York City, uh, and then I lived in California for a few years, then I moved back to New York, and now I live in Connecticut, about an hour out of New York City. Um, oh, that's so exciting. But you, yeah. So you grew up here in Indy, though? I did. In fact, my uh, grandfather was the mayor of Indianapolis for two years. Um, uh, he had worked for the city of Indianapolis his whole life and has worked his way up and uh, became mayor. And so I got to be in the uh, one of the pace cars for the Indy 500 parade. Oh, That's man. I am very excited I about that. <laughs> That's so great. Oh, I, I love it. <laughs> well, from a from a Hoosier toucan, that's that's great to hear. We love those Indy 500 connection. That's that's fantastic. So, Paige, can you tell us a little bit about your work? I know you've written. Is it safe to say dozens of children's books? It's about yeah, fifty or so now. I think so. Um, dozens. Tell us about <laughs> tell us about your work. Well, I you know I didn't plan to be a children's book author. I always loved kids um, and always babysat and did things with kids and did summer programs for kids. And um, then I moved to New York and um, I attended acting school. Um, but what happened was um, I started working for a neighbor of mine because he was a writer and he needed an assistant. And he said, well, why don't you help me? You're a good reader. And you, you, you're a good writer. So I started working for him and I learned how to proofread books and correct them and edit them. And then I had a friend who worked at Scholastic and she said, why don't you come do some freelance work for us? Freelance means just job by job. So I started doing jobs at Scholastic and one thing led to the next. And they said, we're writing some serious books and we need authors. And then I started writing books for uh, series books. So I wrote series books um, that were my idea. And then I wrote some that were uh, other books, like some, some of you may have heard of Sweet Valley Twins. I wrote this one. I wrote a bunch of those. We've definitely heard of those. That's so exciting. <laughs> you did Goosebumps books. Ah! Goosebumps books. I wrote... Um, Bobsy Twins. Oh my goodness. I did stuff for Disney. I did Lion King. I did a whole bunch of books for Disney on the Lion King. That's so great. Um, so I, I had a really, I've had a really wonderful career and, um, everything just sort of led into the next thing and led into the next thing. And, um, about 20 years ago, when my kids were um, in school, I started um, working with the um, Connecticut Arts Group and um, became a teaching artist, which means that I learned how to um, integrate, in other words, mix um, uh, movement, music, writing, uh, art into the curriculum. So I would go in and do residencies where I, where I would create a residency that blended all of those activities together and we'd meet for many weeks and have some final product. Um, so that became a whole other uh, part of what I, what, I, what I did for many, many years. Oh, all of that sounds so fascinating. Now I do wanna tell our listeners that your um, career path is, is maybe not typical, wouldn't you say? For an author? 
Yes. Oh, yes. Definitely. Yeah, not typical. So this is not the way it normally happens, folks. You got to work. Not that you didn't work hard, Paige. I'm sure you worked really hard. But it sounds like you had a lot of luck, which is amazing and something you really need in publishing, don't you think? Yeah, you need to. Yeah, I was lucky. Um, I, you know, I was able to meet some people um, who were in publishing and I was, you know, just starting out and it, it worked out nicely how things just kind of led to other things and um yeah it's like you're it sort of organically grew yeah and and you know in new york it's not it was where everybody was so i was right there and and available so that was um really a great thing yeah so i've got one of your books here the chicken and the worm i have to say that worm looks pretty tasty to me but (laughs) you know I, you know, I'm a bird. So. You know, but you can't eat the worms, Sammy. I'm sorry. These are, these worms are, are it, my crop. It's, it's like, you know, growing strawberries and you eat the strawberries. They're, I need the strawberries. <laughs> and tell us a little bit more about, about why you chose to write this particular book about, about chickens and worms. What do they have to do with each other? Well, um, I was doing a lot of work with an organization called Heifer International. Oh my gosh, wait a minute. We just had an author not too long ago talking about Heifer International. Did you know oh, that? Really? Yeah, she wrote a book called The Seagoing Cowboy, and it was about the history of that, of that whole project. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was a wonderful story. Um, so I did a number of books for them. Um, I'm trying to find, um, but my, my best the the one that I started with was Beatrice's Goat. That's um, beautiful. Such a nice book. Invited me to East Africa to meet a little girl who'd been given a dairy goat that provided milk to her family. Um, and so from that, um, Heifer started inviting me to go on other trips and write about other locations. So I traveled all over the world and wrote stories in Lithuania, Armenia, Chicken the Worm was the United States. Um, but, uh, it was a wonderful opportunity, um, to, to do that. That's amazing. So did you, yeah. Did you want to tell us a little bit more about chickens and worms and how they're related? So, um, we were going to do a book. We did books for different age groups and this was for the youngest age group. And we went to, uh, I went to Little Rock, Arkansas, which is where their headquarters is. And I went and did a lot of research on um, a lot of different animals and we decided um, to do a book about, I thought at first I thought it'd be just a worm and then I thought about a chicken and the worm and then I thought about what if I did a conversation between a chicken and a worm about how they're the same and how they're different. And so that's how this book came about. Um, and it was really a lot of fun to write. And uh, I, I really, had fun writing it. And I learned a lot about worms. And because um, this is how it starts, I am a chicken, I am a worm. And um, it's a conversation about how they're the same and how they're different, as I just said. And um, while I was starting to write it, I, they had worm bins at the heifer farm in Little Rock. And I decided that I would come home and create my own worm bin. So I also have a compost worm bin, and as you just mentioned, that I can share with you here. <laughs> oh, you've got some worms to share with us? Oh, sure. Oh, how exciting. Yeah. Okay, everybody, get ready. She's pulling oh. out the worm bin. I okay. will try not to burst through the camera. Everyone thinks, you know, when I say I have worms, they think I have like compost pile outside with garbage and stuff. These worms, like yours, um, Sammy, live inside. In fact, I keep them in the, in the dining room because oh my it's goodness. quiet in there. No one eats in the dining room. Who uses the dining room? Everyone eats in the kitchen. So apparently the worms do. They dine in the dining room. I get in there. It's nice and quiet. So this is my worm bin. And I think, can you see? Oh, yes. Oh, look at all the little guys. Yeah. So uh, let me, let me show you. So the worms eat about, um, a half a cup of food every other day. They don't eat a lot. And the thing that makes them so valuable is their poop. Poop. <laughs> Provide poop. compost. So I'm sure you've got, <sighs> Sammy, don't eat these. I'm not going to. Okay. I'm keeping it together. Look at that. They're so good looking. 
They're long and skinny. Unlike, they don't look like earthworms. They're much longer and skinnier. And when they get nervous, um, compost worms, you know how every animal has something to protect itself? Um, yes, like I have this big uh, giant beak. Right, or a, a, a bee has a stinger. Well, these compost worms, if you uh, aren't, don't treat them well, if you knock them up and down or something, they release this disgusting, oozy thing that stinks. It's sort of like, it's like they, they let it out of their body and it's really stinky. So Ew. I say to kids, when I take my worm bin to schools, be really gentle because you don't want that. It's really stinky. They have to go to the sink and wash their hands. Gosh, thank you for sharing your worms. That's so fun. Um, so while you're uh, cleaning your hands off there, can I ask you, you know, we're all living through a pandemic right now. How are you doing coping with the health crisis? Well, we've had, um, our son who you just saw, Cole, and his wife, uh, Liz, and our three-year-old granddaughter, um, have been with us, um, for several months now, and they're expecting another baby in September. Aww. So they're here to stay. To yeah. Stay a while. We'll see. I mean, I guess that makes sense because if you don't want to be apart, you might as well just get all together, you know? Right. Yep. They've moved out of their apartment um, in Queens in New York. And they're here. And oh. it's been a lot of fun to have them here. And it's really fun to have a three-year-old in the house. It's fun to read her picture books. And um, it's, it's been nice. You know, we're a little crowded, but we're doing well. That's great. Well, Paige, is there anything else that you wanted to share with people? We do a show and tell, but you've sort of, you've sort of shown us some worms. But what else have you got there? Uh, in terms of books, you mean? Sure. Or, or whatever. Well, let's see. Oh, you know what? This is another book that I wrote that that one this was a this one what was that thing called best children's book from the indie reader <gasps> oh um, great yes my travel adventure it's for like middle grade and it's about a kid who loves stage magic and he um is doing a magic trick and finds himself back in ancient Egypt <gasps> Um, nice. he's doing a, he was getting into a coffin and he ends up in ancient Egypt and um, he has to figure out why he's there and how he can get home. So yeah, this was a fun book to write. So this is a, a book that I really like. And That's so great. So you've got chapter books and you've got picture books and you've got worms. You've got all kinds of stuff. I've got everything. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> well, Paige, this has just been so delightful. Thank you so much for the interview. I hope you have a great day. Good luck with the rest of the pandemic and good luck with the baby. That's so fun. Oh, little baby is going to be fun. Oh. All right, <laughs> folks. Well, this is your favorite Hoosier Toucan encouraging you to read local. So long. Bye-bye.